Hello and welcome to the ABC Networking Channel. My name is Dick van Oeveren and in this video I will be showing you some additions and changes that I've made to the Flask framework with Aruba switches. This video is actually a teaser. In subsequent videos I will dive into the techniques of the app and explain how all things work. In this video I will be showing you the outcome and I hope you will like it. And really the goal of these videos is to show to you that it is not that difficult to create a Python app yourself that helps you in your day-to-day -day network administration and management. You can really do a lot of very cool stuff with tools that are readily available and cost you nothing other than some time to code your app. Here's the GUI. As you can see I have added a navigation bar at the top here. This means that it will be very easy to add new functions and pages and so this nav bar comes from the uh, Flask Bootstrap library. Now the main page gives you an overview of the devices that have been added. And let me add some devices. I will be adding two Aruba OS CX switches that operate in VSX, an Aruba OS switch device that operates in VSF, this is also called front plane stacking, and a standalone Aruba OS switch, which in this case is a 3810. Let me start by adding uh, the, uh, the primary VSX. A cool thing here is that when I create a device, I only have to prov provide the IP address, a description, and a username password. When I submit the device, a Python definition is called that discovers what type of device it is and then updates the database accordingly. So what you can see here is, is that the definition has discovered that this is an Aruba OS CX device, it's a, an 8320, and it's running software version 10.1. Now let me add the other devices. Uh, that's 21, which will be the secondary. Yeah, and then add the uh, VSF, which is a pair of 2930s. There you go. And let me add the 3810. There you go. One of the many things that I've changed compared to the previous two videos and, and the previous two versions of the uh, app is that the front end uh, actually only obtains information from the database and not from the device directly anymore. So this gives you a, a couple of advantages, the, the main one being speed. When you would obtain information from a device through REST and the device is not available, you will get no information. If that information is obtained in the background, but the information that is displayed on the page comes from the database, that information is displayed very fast. Plus you get to see the latest information that is or was available. Now the only time when the app obtains information from the device itself is after submitting a new device. The app has to know what type of device we're dealing with. So that's your discovery definition. Once the app knows that, and the information is stored in a, data, uh, in a database, we're, we're good to go. So now, and as you can see, the, the response times are really very fast when showing the information. Now let's go to the device monitoring page. This is really the main addition compared to the previous uh, versions of the app. What we can do on this page is select a device and then the page shows you a lot of information. Let's start with the VSX. Okay, so once, uh, once the information is gathered on the background um, you can see that there is a lot of information here. You can see the CPU utilization and memory utilization in, uh, in a line chart and you can see that that is uh, dynamically updated, being dynamically updated every 10 seconds and there is a lot of device information you can see here. 
okay so so the great thing is that this information is refreshed like every 10 seconds seconds so if you make a configuration change like creating a, v, a VLAN this is uh, this is shown if a power supply fails this is shown and then for most of devices you can also see the line charts that give you the device utilization and and memory utilization and as you can see this is also dynamically updated now let me show you when I make some changes to a switch configuration and how it is reflected on the page. Let's create a VLAN on a VSX and assign an IP address. Here I am connected to the switch. Uh, let me create a VLAN here. Um, say VLAN 100. And then watch what happens on the screen here after a couple of seconds. Let's give it a name. There you go. You can see that the VLAN 100 is there, and then uh, I've assigned a, a, des uh, um, a description, and that should change there as well. Uh, let me give it an IP address, and let me give it. Uh, sorry, I have to create the VLAN interface, obviously. Uh, IP address 10.100.101. And let's create another one, which will be the secondary. Um, let's create an IPv6 address. Um, just add another one. I'll just see what happens here. You can see that the information is dynamically updated. You should see the IPv6 addresses here as well. There you go. Okay, so let's do something similar on one of the other switches. Let's select the um, VSF switch. So when there is no information in the database, no data is explained, but you can see every 10 seconds that data is uh, obtained and stored in the database, and then after 10 seconds you will get that information. You can see here that um, the switch type is VSF, and you can see the domain that is assigned, you can see the power supply status, uh, the VSF member information, uh, VLAN IDs, you can see that I've configured a trunk group. And now let me remove that trunk group uh, so that will be no trunk uh, and that will be interface 2 slash 1 and 2 slash 2 and then we, you should that should be reflected here in the uh, on the screen as well so that should be removed and there you go it's removed okay um Let's uh, well, let's take the uh, 3810 here. So the 3810 is a standalone switch. For the standalone switch, we are we, we don't have a REST call that can obtain the CPU utilization. So the CPU utilization and memory utilization is only supported when you have uh, a stacking configuration, whether it's backplane stacking or VSF, or the uh, or the Arubo SCX um, switches. So on the um, 3810, let's create a radius server. Host 192.168.0.12 and I've provided a key. And let's see what's happening here. We should see the radius server coming in the, uh, in the table here. There you go. That's cool. So uh, I can also obtain inf uh, interface information on this page. And that inf interface information is also updated dynamically. So let me just select a port here on the 3810. That's port 48. And so this port uh, is actually up. And it is connected to, you can see that it is connected to the 2930 VSF here. So you can also get the... Um, LLDP information here and I guess really at the end of the day it's up to you what you want to display on the page 
it's all a matter of obtaining of obtaining the right information from the switch using the rest apis and this concludes the short teaser of this um, aruba networking uh, flask app as said i will be creating some additional videos where i explain exactly how the app works uh, like under the hood. In the meantime, if you are interested to download the code, you can find the code on the public HP GitHub on the link that is shown in the first com uh, comment below the video. I hope that you liked the teaser. If you did, please hit the like button. If you have any suggestions or ideas for videos, we are happy to accommodate where possible and relevant. Thanks for watching and as always, have a great day. Bye.